Welcome to the skill capped starter course for Restoration Druid and Dragonflight. This video will guide you through everything you need to know for setting up your character in the new expansion. We will start by covering what's new and by going over how the spec has changed, and then cover all the foundational information for PvP including the best races. Then providing a core talent that you can safely copy but also giving you some alternative builds. We will do the same for PvP talents then we will show you how to gear and enchant. And finally, we will give you the macros you need for Arena and Dragonflight. And while this guide does a great job at getting you started, you're missing out big time if you're not already a member over at our platform Skillcapped. We work with the absolute best players possible to give you all the information you need to gain a ton of rating stupidly fast in Dragonflight. For Resto Druid, we worked alongside Lontar who is considered by many to be one of the best healers in the entire world, boasting multiple rank 1 titles and having several tournament appearances. Our Resto Druid healing course is designed to walk you step by step through the seemingly complicated healing priority of the spec, while teaching you how to maximize healing output just like a rank 1 player. It didn't stop there though as we even developed videos for our new Master in Minutes series to teach you some advanced tricks you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to know how to power through tough AoE healing situations, or how to make your healing instantly 20% stronger, then you need to check out our binge-worthy courses. This, alongside our comprehensive crowd control and survival guides, it's a no-brainer to join skill caps this expansion, if you want to be light years ahead of everyone else who doesn't have access to our courses. We're also super excited to announce our brand new article site for Dragonflight where you can find a written version of this guide. In the article, we've conveniently provided the export link for you to import the talent build we cover in this guide. We also have all the macros listed for you to easily copy and create in-game. We'll be keeping the article updated throughout the expansion with the most recent talents and everything else that the best players in the world are using, so be sure to visit the link in the description. Bookmark it and check back often to keep yourself up to date with the most recent build. Alright, let's get back to the video. Right. Kicking things off, let's cover what has changed for Druid in the new expansion. In terms of actually healing, Life Bloom has taken a clear lead as the absolute best heal in your toolkit. Not only does it carry your HPS, but it also comes equipped with some new and recycled tech including granting triple mastery, a new stacking modifier, the ability to Life Bloom 2 targets and a 20% healing speed increase for all of your HOTs. Resto has also gained a recycled version of Genesis from Mists of Pandaria with a new Invigorate talent, which provides a powerful way to burst heal, something which was desperately needed. On the flip side though, Nature's Swiftness isn't nearly as powerful as it was in Shadowlands. Although it still offers great burst healing, it has lost some of the modifiers that made it absolutely broken. And for the most part, much of your rotation will still hinge on Swiftman since Verdant's Infusion has made its way to the Resto tree. So what does this all mean for your playstyle? Fortunately, it hasn't really changed too much from Shadowlands, though there could be more room for offensive play. Let's explain. For one, the core of Resto Druid healing still requires a lot of maintenance. You are rewarded for carefully managing HOTs and punished for falling behind, though maybe not as much due to Invigorate. This means that playing conservatively is likely the most consistent strategy, and that generally involves playing in the back and limiting how much you interact with the enemy team. With that said, there could be a bit of wiggle room for more offensive play due to Rake being easily accessible on the general tree. And with damage profiles seeming less bursty overall, it could mean that there might be more opportunities to play aggressive assuming HOTs are well maintained. Resto gained some instant burst damage with Star Surge and Thorns is still powerful. But Wrath and Moonfire feel dwarfed compared to some of the damage tools that other healers have in their toolkit. In any case, things are looking quite good for Resto Druids in Dragonflight. With consistently high HPS, unique control options, and new ways for dealing with bursts, they will probably be strong in 3v3. In 2v2, Druids will likely hold their spot as one of the best healers. Their raw efficiency combined with the ability to easily reset for drinks should continue to carry them into the next expansion. Altogether, Resto Druid and Dragonflight will have a similar feel to Shadowlands but with some improvements sprinkled in. The core design of the spec remains largely intact, making the new expansion easily approachable for returning players. With our playstyle update covered, let's move on to the best race for Resto Druids in Dragonflight. Without a doubt, Night Elf is still the best option in the new expansion. Shadow Meld remains one of the best racials overall for healers, but especially Druid. For one, it instantly drops combat allowing you to quickly sit down to drink and recover mana, which works exceptionally well while in Prowl. And even when not needing to drink, it opens up the ability to instantly prowl in order to utilize Rake Stun, which is great for comboing with Cyclone on setups. 
Finally, Shadow Meld can be used to immune any incoming spell projectiles, even forms of instant cast CC with precise timing. With all of these benefits, Night Elf is a clear winner, no question about it. If Alliance or Night Elf isn't your thing, then Tauren is your second best option. Of course, Tauren comes equipped with War Stomp, which is a perfect combo starter with Cyclone. But the slight HP bonus is also a welcome passive, especially since it increases the value of Frenzied Regen. Now let's talk about talents, which might seem a bit confusing after the revamp to the talent system in Dragonflight. We will start by giving you what we're calling your core build before adding on your optional talents both in the Druid and Restoration trees. The core build includes talents that are good for a wide array of situations. It is meant to be multi-purpose, and if you are randomly teleported into a random arena game, having these talents would give you the most flexibility. We'll begin with the core Druid talents. Here, you'll want to always pick up every talent we've highlighted in green. There are almost no circumstances where you would want to avoid any of these. At the top of the tree, we will be picking up Frenzy Regeneration for its efficient defensive coverage, as well as Rake since having an additional stun is always useful in every arena context. Then, towards the middle of the tree, we will be wanting Wild Charge for its dynamic mobility options, as well as Cyclone, which as you already know is core to the entire class as a whole. There are very few situations where you would ever want to play without Clone, We've selected the choice between Incapacitating Roar and Mighty Bash as core since either one of these are essential CC tools that have numerous uses. Bash is often the default pick since stuns are almost always useful, whereas Incapacitating Roar can be redundant if there are numerous in-cap DRs on your team. As is often the case when playing with mages or if your team deals lots of AoE damage since they break the CC. On the other side of the tree, we have the decision to choose Vortex or Mass Entanglement. Vortex is technically more versatile, but Mass Entanglement has some niche uses, especially against classes with multiple pets including Windwalker Monks for Storm, Earth, and Fire. We've also made Lycaris Teachings a hard lock talent. You will ideally want to spend 3 points here, but 2 is acceptable. This simply gives us more baseline haste and allows us to itemize more mastery which we will be discussing later. The remaining talents in red are all optional and can help add flavor to your build. None of these are 100% mandatory, but let's first cover the most desirable options. These include a set of Guardian Talents towards the middle of the tree. At the top, we have Improved Barkskin and Verdant Heart, both of which will make us much more durable and are safe general picks for every arena game. The series of talents directly to the left leading up to Bash are also very safe picks since they simply make us tankier, which again, is always good no matter what. On the left side of the tree, we have some Feral Affinity Talents. These can be desirable in 2v2, but not at all required in the bracket. If you want to play a highly aggressive cat form build, you should select this path leading up to Bash. Then on the right side of the tree, we have a few balanced talents. These are quite strong as well, especially with Star Surge for some instant damage and Astral Influence for added range on every spell. Selecting this path means sacrificing some survivability, which can be worth it in matchups where you absolutely won't be the kill target. Then towards the bottom of the tree, we have all three end cap talents. None of these are exceptionally good. Nature's Vigil damage can be high in shorter games but can break some forms of CC. Protector of the Pack is arguably a bit more consistent and gives your Moonfire a chance at hitting upwards of 30k in max item level gear. Next, let's look at the core build of your Restoration Tree. Again, we've selected all of the mandatory talents in the Restoration Tree in green. This will apply to both the Treeform build and the Invigorate build we will showcase later. Towards the top of the tree, we've selected Nature Splendor over Passing Seasons. This is because NS Regrowth Healing was slightly nerfed going into Dragonflight, so having this additional modifier makes our Emergency Heal feel much stronger. In the middle of the tree, we've selected Inner Peace as a default pick since it makes Tranquility line up with Trinket for an Emergency Defensive while also preventing knockbacks from interrupting its channel. But you could swap this for Dream State in shorter matchups or whenever there isn't a monk on the enemy team. Finally, towards the bottom of the tree, we've selected Verdant Infusion as a core talent. This is not only amazing for mana efficiency since it automatically extends all haunts in a single swift mend, but also gives us some microburst healing by extending Scenarian Ward, which is crucial for our healing output. Now let's circle back and look at some optional loadouts which include different combinations of the talents in red. First up, we have a tree form build which has become the standard loadout in Season 1. This obviously requires Incarnation, but also the talent right below it, which grants guaranteed clear casting procs during tree form, while also offering cooldown reduction through Life Bloom's expiration and with Regrowth crits. 
In order to get more guaranteed critical strikes, this means we will pick up the improved Rigo's talent higher up on the tree to give it an increased crit chance and more CDR. This entire build is tailored around 3v3 in solo shuffle due to its increased to bursty healing output and mana efficiency. Next, we have an Invigorate build which of course requires Invigorate. This is an excellent burst healing tool with the main drawback of being a bit more mana intensive and countered by the spells. For this build, we will also want Regenesis since it adds an additional healing modifier to Rejuvenation, increasing the effect of Invigorate on lower health targets. Finally, we have an AoE healing focused arena build which utilizes Unbridled Swarm for more adaptive swarm healing across multiple targets. This is arguably the least desirable out of all three builds, but can be a great option into very specific comps, specifically with Afflection Warlocks. With that out of the way, let's cover your best PvP talents. For the meantime, Keeper of the Grove is your only 100% mandatory PvP talent. It essentially turns Tranquility into a Paladin's Bubble, making it a powerful emergency defensive option to avoid lethal damage. Focus Growth is another core PvP talent that we highly recommend playing in every matchup. On paper, it is one of the best ways to increase your healing output since it increases Life Bloom healing with every new application. And with the Undergrowth talent, you can increase Life Bloom healing across two targets. The rest of your PvP talents are a bit situational, with both Thorns and Reactive Resin being amazing into double melee teams. Thorns is exceptionally strong and even acts as a pseudo-defensive cooldown, something that we highlight in our defensives course. On the flip side, Early Spring is really good into teams with high AoE damage, especially against caster DPS, since Wild Growth can easily be interrupted from range. Just be careful using Wild Growth often as it does require a lot of mana. Finally, we have some aggressive talent options with Master Shapeshifter being a great choice for aggressive 2v2 builds, especially when playing Heart of the Wild. High Winds is also an optional choice, especially if you want to play aggressive with Cyclones, which you generally can do more frequently in 2v2. Deep Roots can also be selected when playing double caster compositions, especially with Warlock, since it can help keep enemy melee pinned down, even through damage. We don't really recommend the new Precognition talent as a default pick, since Resto Druids typically don't chain cast spells, making this have little value. Next up, we're going to be covering gear. But before we do, if you want to see the rest of our class course, it is available only at skillcaps.com. There, you can access our premium damage rotation and bursting guides, alongside our defensive play and crowd control courses, which were designed by some of the best WoW players in the world. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating game guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So, check out skillcaps.com today. Now, we'll get into your stat priority and how you should be gearing. Starting with your stat priority, you will primarily want versatility, which you will automatically get with all PvP pieces, making it easily accessible. After this, we would highly recommend a balance of both mastery and haste. This requires a bit of an explanation. With talent options like Grove Tending, Cultivation, and especially Harmonious Blooming, the value of Mastery is incredibly high since these all directly make your Mastery stronger. Likewise, with the 6% Haste bonus provided by Lycaris Teachings, you are able to achieve a comfortable amount of Haste without needing Haste Optimized Gear. With that said, you will still want a decent amount of Haste, somewhere around 20% just to make the game feel a bit more fluid with your GCD and for casting Regrowth and Cyclone. In general though, there is no set best in slot method of gearing since versatility, mastery, and haste are all valuable in different contexts. If you want the most damage possible, stack verse. If you want to be aggressive with cyclones, play haste. If you want to maximize healing, go with mastery. For a balanced experience, mixing a bit of each is suggested. Luckily, the gearing process in Dragonflight is a bit streamlined and eventually your goal is to get a full set of 424 eye level conquest gear. The only exception to this is a pair of crafted boots which offer 5% additional CC reduction to the new set bonus from equipping two PvP trinkets, and even some optional gear that is obtained through World PvP. These pieces are lower item level but you can combine the belt and bracers to get as much mastery as possible. You will also have the option to convert all conquest gear into tier pieces with the inspiration catalyst. The tier set bonuses can be valuable in arena since they give you increased crit chance on a few spells, and effectively lower the cooldown of NS by around 15 to 20 seconds depending on RNG and life bloom uptime, which gives you a similar bonus as the passing seasons talent essentially for free. Equipping your 4 set comes at a small loss to versatility but is a trade worth making unless you really want to maximize your passive output or survivability. 
As for trinkets, there are only a few options with medallion being 100% mandatory, no exceptions. For your second trinket slot, insignia should be your default pick in most matchups, but you could play with emblem in situations where you could be the kill target since it offers an additional defensive cooldown, while also giving you increased healing with frenzied regeneration since it scales based off your maximum HP. Moving into gems and enchants, this one is pretty straightforward. Since versatility is your best secondary stat, you'll ideally look to both gem and enchant this wherever possible. But as we discussed before, you could customize your build according to taste, stacking mastery for more overall healing or haste for more aggressive control with cyclone and faster GCDs. Since secondary stats will have diminishing returns above 30%, this incentivizes balancing both mastery and haste once you have reached a 30% threshold with versatility. This means your ring enchants can help balance out any voids in your itemization. Versatility, Mastery, and Haste Enchants are all valuable, so use Ring Enchants to get Versatility to 30% if needed, and then balance between Mastery and Haste if not. Next, there are a handful of Speed Enchants you can get on your Bracers, Cloak, and Boots, although you do have the choice of getting a Stamina Enchant on Boots if you prefer the very minor increase to your survivability. For your chest, we highly recommend the Reserve of Intellect Enchant as it will give you a boost to Intellect while providing you with a larger Mana Pool which is enormously helpful in PvP. You could opt for Waking Stats instead, which will give you more overall intellect and stamina which you might want in more explosive matchups. For legs, there are two similar options, both Temporal and Frozen Spell Thread. Again, there are situational advantages to each, but Temporal is likely overall better for most arena games. As for your weapon, the Sophic Devotion and Chance is best since it provides you with a proc-based increase to intellect, which is always valuable no matter what the context. To wrap things up, let's go over some macros you will find useful in PvP. There's at least one fundamental macro which you should never play without, and that is one including Nature Swiftness and Regrowth allowing you to perform both abilities in a single key press. Then, for some additional quality of life improvements, we highly suggest making an Innervate self macro for arenas, allowing you to automatically apply the buff to yourself no matter who you are targeting. On top of this, you should also make a macro that uses your Drink and Prowl at the same time, making it much easier to regenerate mana. As a healer with lots of control options, you have a bit of flexibility in how you decide to macro. For instance, you could make macros for Cyclone Arena 123, which will allow you to use this ability on any player opponent no matter who you are targeting. You could do the same for both Entangling Roots and Bash, having Arena 123 commands for each. The advantage to these macros is it makes your gameplay very fluid, but it means you need 4 or 5 keybinds for each of these spells. On the flip side, you could simply make a focus macro for each of these spells, which will save some keybinding space at the cost of making your gameplay slightly less fluid. You could also make party dispel macros for your nature's cure, allowing you to instantly remove important debuffs. And by default, you should have keybinding set up to target party 1, 2, and self to make it easy to switch between friendly targets. There are then a handful of macros that are completely optional but include some interactions you might find useful. First up, you can utilize the slash cancel form command with wild charge to automatically fly to a friendly target. Next up is a cursor macro for Ursul's Vortex. This will automatically cast Vortex on the location of your cursor, circumventing the need to manually click on the ground. Finally, you could make a macro that automatically casts Growl whenever you enter bear form. This can be useful against hunters and warlocks for temporarily changing the target of their pets. There is obviously a lot of depth to macro making, but anything we've mentioned will be more than enough to carry you through your arena journey, and there are limited cases to go beyond what we have mentioned. Alright guys, that's it for this one. As a reminder, don't forget to visit and bookmark the written version of this guide linked in the description that we'll be keeping updated throughout the expansion over on our brand new article site. And if you're looking to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight, head over to skillcap.com right now and check out our premium courses risk-free. That's right, we are the only service that dares to literally guarantee at least 400 rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching and we will see you in the next one.